It's almost like a ticking clock, this possibly imminent clash between China and Taiwan. China, of course, has incorporated in its constitution that it has to acquiesce Taiwan by any means possible, even if it means by forceful means. The United States, the biggest superpower in the world, has said that that is an absolute red line. Joining me now is an Indian American congressman, someone who has recently been to Taiwan and who uh, knows a thing or two about what's going on in this part of the world. Ro Khanna is a U.S. congressman. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. Uh, I want to start with the most pressing clash that's happening in the world right now and which has divided the entire world, which is Russia, Ukraine. I want your assessment of where the war stands right now. Do you see any road to peace as of today? Well, first of all, the world of democracies, nations of democracy, should clearly condemn uh, Putin's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. I mean, there's no moral equivalence between Ukraine and Russia. Putin basically invaded a sovereign country. And my understanding is India has condemned Putin's invasion. Uh, even China has uh, criticized Putin's invasion. Uh, we need to, the United States has stood up for uh, Ukraine's sovereignty. Uh, and Putin needs to recognize that he can't invade a sovereign nation and there should be uh, a diplomatic solution uh, that preserves Ukraine's sovereignty. And I hope countries uh, like India and others that historically have had relationships with Russia can uh, push uh, Russia to understand that. Uh, Congressman Khanna, in your view, what would a peaceful resolution or at least a move towards some kind of a ceasefire look like in Ukraine right now? Well, I think the president's position, President Biden's position has been that we will support uh, Ukraine's sovereignty. I mean, right now you have Russia uh, launching uh, hypersonic missiles against uh, civilians. You have uh, brutality uh, in, in, in what's going on. We have to come to, to Ukraine's defense. But then there needs to be, uh, at the same time, uh, talks and engagement uh, to have a just peace. And it's for Ukraine ultimately to decide what that uh, looks like. Uh, and we will support Ukraine in that effort. I do think that countries like India uh, can play a facilitating role uh, in helping us get to a just peace. Now, now, we've had some recent warnings from administration officials, including Secretary Blinken, uh, who says that the U.S. is extremely concerned about China providing lethal aid to Russia. What is your assessment? Is there something that the world should be worried about? Uh, China is doing a lot of things in favor of Russia, but would giving it lethal aid, giving it military equipment, would that be crossing a red line in your view? I hope China doesn't do it. Uh, so far, at least, the, 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 there's no evidence that they concretely have. Uh, and that would just escalate the conflict. It would uh, entangle more great powers into, into the conflict. Uh, the hope for the world is that uh, this conflict end, and I hope China will play uh, a role of persuading Russia uh, not to uh, invade Ukraine's ter territorial sovereignty. Congressman, uh, do you believe that this war has further accentuated the two camps, as it were? You have the United States and its European allies on the one side, and then you have in the other camp, uh, Russia and China. Is this, as many people are calling it, the new Cold War? Well, Russia and China for the past 10 years have had close relationships. I mean, Xi Jinping has met Putin over 30 times. He often describes Putin as one of his closest uh, uh, partners and friends. Uh, so that relationship was uh, already there. Uh, I think that uh, this has strengthened the United States relationship with NATO. Ironically, Putin has actually ended up strengthening NATO. Uh, and my hope uh, is that uh, India will emerge as a strong uh, ally of the United States. I'm the co-chair of the India-U.S. Uh, caucus, uh, and uh, we'll be working to strengthen the U.S.-India re relationship. Uh, India is going to be a key player uh, in uh, the 21st century uh, in defining the democratic world. So just this past week, uh, we've had the Chinese Communist Party in its uh, annual parliamentary session giving its stamp of approval for a historic third term, an unprecedented third term for Xi Jinping. What is your assessment of where U.S.-China ties stand as of right now? 
They're tenants. I mean, we need to rebalance production to bring jobs back to America that left to China. We need to make sure that uh, we provide Taiwan with sufficient defense to uh, deter uh, any military invasion uh, while affirming the one China policy. Uh, we need to make sure that it's clear to the chi China that they can't have surveillance over the United States. So it's tense, but uh, it shouldn't devolve into a Cold War. But do you believe that it, th this might actually be the start of a new Cold War? Uh, I think the person who came up with that was Gideon Rockman, the FT columnist on foreign policy. But a lot of people have been agreeing with this view that if the original Cold War was between the United States and the Soviet Union, now the new Cold War could be the U.S., its European allies, and Russia and China, on the other hand. Is this a new Cold War, according to you? No, I think that is avoidable if we rebalance our production, if we bring uh, manufacturing back here, uh, if, we, uh, if China recognizes it's in its own interest to diversify its economy, to focus on services and domestic production, uh, and if China recognizes that uh, they should not uh, depart from the status quo when it comes to Taiwan. You were in Taiwan a few weeks ago. What are your impressions of what is happening in that country? What's going on between Taiwan and China? Because some are saying that if it actually came down to it, China would annex Taiwan even by force. Well, I was very impressed. I met with the president, President Tsai, and uh, they're focused on increasing their defense, which is, makes a lot of sense. They've increased the conscription from four months to a year for every uh, Taiwanese 18-year-old, uh, and they want the United States to expedite uh, our defense uh, to them. Do, do you believe an armed conflict is possible between China and Taiwan, given that you know they've now incorporated this in the Chinese constitution? about the reunification of Taiwan with the mainland, uh, even if by force? I think it's avoidable. It's avoidable if we build up Taiwan's defense, but more importantly, if we continue the uh, lines of communication with China, which all parties in Taiwan wanted to do. They said they have lived with communist China for over 30 years. They know the ups and downs. They know how to manage it. And American politicians shouldn't get ahead of our skis. We shouldn't be pushing for things that Taiwanese politicians don't. As I understood Taiwan uh, leaders, they want to build their defense, but they also want engagement still with China. Uh, they don't want a departure from the status quo. Uh, and if the America, if we affirm that, I think a war uh, can be avoided. Uh, what do you make of the fact about the recent local elections in Taiwan in which uh, the KMT, which is the party that's known to be closer to Beijing or soft on Beijing, uh, they won many of these uh, recent local elections, and there is every possibility that this party could win the general elections in Taiwan, which are due next year. Could that reduce the possibility of some kind of armed conflict between China and Taiwan? Well, I met with the chair of the KMT, and uh, and and I, I I do think KMT and the DPP both believe actually in increasing Taiwan's defense. They both believe in engagement. You may actually see a convergence as we head to the presidential election. But the parties recognize, well, 40 percent of Taiwan's exports are to mainland China. A lot of their business is tied like Foxconn to, to mainland China. Uh, I don't believe the Taiwanese want war. They, they want uh, they want to, to, to uh, have a, uh, a, a peace. And they believe over the next 30, 40 years, Maybe uh, everyone can become democratic. So I, I think we can okay. avoid war uh, in that region. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you see or how you envisage the role of India, particularly after the pandemic. Uh, companies around the world, including you know the, the big ones, Apple and others, manufacturing companies, uh, are looking at a policy of China plus one. Do you believe that India can be that plus one? Well, I believe that when it comes to the Asian base uh, uh, for manufacturing, India can be uh, a significant player there. Uh, and it's going to be a challenge. I mean, we already see Foxconn making a big investment in India. Uh, of course, geographically, Vietnam is closer to the China supply chain. So India's going to have to build out uh, the supply chain. They're going to have to streamline some of the local uh, regulations and uh, assure foreign investors that. Uh, it's a, a good and safe place, uh, an easy place to invest. 
but there is that prospect for India to to build its manufacturing capability, and that also will help it uh, in terms of not being as dependent on Russian arms if it builds its own defense manufacturing capability. How do you see India's role in the emerging geopolitics, particularly in the context of the Russia-Ukraine war? We have the G20 summit that India is hosting this year. Uh, do you believe that because of its unique relationship, both with the United States and with Russia, India could do something to help solve uh, this, this problem, this conflict? I, I think India could. I mean, I, I'm disappointed India still buy so much oil from Russia. I wish that we could come to some agreement uh, that they get compensated from uh, Europe, from the United States, and getting alternative sources. But I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, India can play uh, a role in uh, bringing a just peace, especially given India's historic relationship with Russia. And I think they're uh, poised to be a, uh, a mediator, a facilitator, Israel as well, given Israel's historic relationship with Russia. Uh, some of these countries may be uh, better poised to uh, ultimately uh, bring a just peace because they are seen as having relationships with Putin. And finally, do you believe this war has sort of split the entire international community down the middle? The way it's being viewed from Washington or London or Kiev is very, very different from how it's being viewed in a New Delhi or a Tel Aviv or a Dubai, leave alone how it's being viewed in Beijing and in uh, Moscow. I think there's a consensus that what Putin did is wrong, that Putin's invasion in Ukraine was a violation of territorial sovereignty. And I think India understands that uh, best. I mean, India doesn't like it when China violates the line of control in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, any nation uh, that is non-expansionist, India has been a non-expansionist nation, uh, should respect sovereignty. Uh, okay. And the last thing you want is great powers running roughshod, taking uh, land. I think the question then is, how do you have a just peace. And there, there are uh, differences of opinion. Uh, and how do you make sure that the Russian economy is not facilitating this war? And of course, that's where there's been disagreements with the United States. But my hope is that uh, India ultimately will be part of the solution uh, in having Russia uh, re recognize that they can't take Ukraine sovereignty and having a just peace. All right. Uh, Congressman Ro Khanna, thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. That was that exclusive interview with uh, United States Congressman, Indian-American Ro Khanna, talking about the Russia-Ukraine war, the China-Taiwan conflict potentially, which could even be militarized, and of course how he sees India's role in all of these emerging dynamics uh, in the geopolitical situation of the world. That's a wrap. Thank you very much for your time. Good night.